Hello, I'm Courtney Holland. Welcome to Season 3 of Save Our Towns, a series designed to guide and inspire those working hard in Appalachia to build strong communities. Our good friend Keith Pierce has moved on to a different opportunity and he wishes everyone well. In this first episode of Season 3, we'll take you to Independence, and right after that, we introduce you to Cleveland, the town we'll follow for a whole year. Your expert tips comes from a Washington, D.C. specialist who studies small towns nationwide. You'll see some quick information about a faculty member and an extension agent who may be able to help you. And as always, we close with three questions for a mayor. First, this month's example of awesome story was reported by a fresh graduate of Virginia Tech, Abby Young, earlier this summer. She shows how the town of Independence was a real firecracker when it came to selling the town's labor force. On the 4th of July, Independence takes full advantage of its name, celebrating America's founding in a big way. And the rest of the year? Like many towns on the New River, Independence touts everything from sunset watching to swimming, kayaking to hiking. And also like other towns in Southwest Virginia, music takes center stage. But the big economic development story is all about the town sewing up a deal. Oak Hall was a great marriage for the town of Independence. Uh, with their long history from the late 1800s, manufacturing gowns for everything from high school, college graduation, church choirs to the U.S. Supreme Court. Just one problem. Town leaders had been savvy enough to gain ownership of an 85,000 square foot building that had been empty for decades. But when a no-call executive made a site visit in late 2014, he saw a building in need of a million dollar renovation. Roof repair, electrical rewiring, new windows and more were required. Plus, it was too big and the ceiling height was only 13 feet instead of the factory friendly 21 to 27 feet. One company official initially gave a quick no, based also on the seeming lack of skilled workers in the area, despite the region's rich history in the textile industry. We knew this was going to take a tremendous effort. Uh, when we initially provided the workforce analysis numbers to the company, uh, they scoffed at it. Uh, however, we were able to put together 220 names, addresses, and phone numbers submitted to the company of folks in the region who had experience in sewing and who wanted to work. For the next few months, the town's leaders worked closely with the county. Together, they assembled a comprehensive funding approach and came up with strategies to strengthen their competitiveness against the other small towns in the running. Many counties and townies across uh, the country choose to squabble. Uh, Grayson County and the town of Independence actually chose to work together. Uh, we're um, too small and sometimes overextended to go at projects alone. So we found that joining forces, we can actually achieve uh, things that are otherwise seemingly impossible for jurisdictions our size. They even approached the company's president with a direct appeal to re-evaluate their building, community, and workforce. In the end, Oak Hall changed its no to a yes and even contributed to the renovation costs, as did the Virginia Tobacco Commission. It was a happy day when in March 2015, the governor announced that Oak Hall Cap and Gown would be opening its newest manufacturing facility in Independence. Now the factory brings the town annual revenues of close to $40,000. The Independence Town Council's foresight purchases this building in 2011 and the cooperation and indeed the enthusiasm of the county leadership to help us renovate this building and make it suitable for Oak Hall has gone a long ways in ensuring the future of independence in Grayson County. The town's successful effort beat out locations in North Carolina and elsewhere in Virginia. By working together and refusing to give up, the community helped take another step toward financial independence. Now for one of our favorite features, it's time to introduce the town we'll follow for a year, Cleveland. Whether its fortunes go up or down, you'll be along for the ride. Our executive producer, Andrea Brunet, literally dives into the story. Booming in the days of railroads and coal mining, tiny Cleveland now has fewer than 200 people. Its single restaurant recently closed. But you might call this the million dollar town. That's because Cleveland leveraged work done for it by Virginia Tech's Community Design Assistance Center. The first small grant paid for an access point on the Clinch River. Bigger money that followed will underwrite a footbridge and a campground to be built after an old school is torn down. That's because Cleveland intends to become the jewel in the crown of the Clinch River, one of the most biodiverse rivers in America. An outfitter, Grip Outdoor, chose Cleveland for its first location. 
There's another one in Tennessee. Calling all kayakers and canoeists. Or even just a tube on a hot summer day. <laughs> Kathy Johnson is Cleveland's town manager. If you want food uh, to go shopping, anything, we have to go across the mountains to the town of Lebanon. But the town of Cleveland has the Clinch River running right through the middle of it. We do think that that's going to save the town in the long run. We hope to, to capitalize on the river, you know, bring in some restaurants, some little places to go shopping. Did we mention the million dollars in grant money from various sources? The idea is to make the most of some spectacular recreational features, including a natural area preserve. Think towering cliffs, limestone ledges, and waterfalls. There's a waterfall in town, too, the 60-foot-tall Tank Hollow Falls that eventually will have miles of hiking trails around it. And the Riverside Campground will allow for RVs and tents, with a swinging bridge over the river connecting campers to downtown. These are ambitious plans for a town of any size, but for a place whose residents wouldn't fill a school auditorium, will they succeed? In future episodes, we'll meet the mayor and others. Stay along. You don't know what we'll see on this ride. Your expert tip comes from Jim Brooks, an authority with the National League of Cities, who points out that big city lessons can be of great benefit to small town mayors. Sometimes they tend not to want to learn from much larger cities. It's a natural expectation that a larger city has so many more resources, so much more dollars, so many more people. But in most cases, the process tends to be the same. They've got to think about the vision, they've got to think about the stakeholders, they've got to think about where they want to take it, they have to assemble the different parts, they've got to dedicate city resources. All of these things are processes that local governments do, whether it's New York or whether it's Shepherdstown or some other smaller community, whether it's you know Kentucky or Tennessee or New York or Pennsylvania. And so some of those processes are the same. And I think local officials, if they, if they understand that, they can get a lot of ideas from other cities, not just their neighbors, but ones in the other side of the state or ones in neighboring states. You can read a transcript of the complete interview at the Save Our Towns website, where Brooks talks about migration patterns, placemaking, and more. Click on the Connect with Experts tab. Next, here are two more people with great ideas to share. Stephen Schoenholtz is director of the Virginia Water Resources Research Center at Virginia Tech. His research team, and sometimes students, work in headwater streams affected by mountaintop removal mining in central Appalachian coal mining regions. Large-scale mining explosions carry dissolved solids downstream via rainfall. Certain insects are sensitive to changes in the water quality. Monitoring the bug community can show whether the rest of the food chain may also be impacted. Megan Seibel runs Valor, a leadership program in which participants travel worldwide in pursuit of a holistic approach to agriculture. They develop communication, problem solving, and networking skills while meeting with decision makers such as members of Congress and governors. Destination points range from the Virginia Port Authority to reclaimed mines on the border with Kentucky. Each group ends up with a broader knowledge of global and local agriculture. For more information, go to the Save Our Towns website. You'll find Schoenholtz under the VT Projects tab and Seibel under the Extension tab. Now we return to Independence to ask three questions of the mayor. Uh, my name is Butch Reeves and I'm the mayor of the town of Independence, Virginia. Country living. Biggest challenge would absolutely be into, uh, being able to provide jobs for our citizens and our county. Unemployment is definitely a challenge. We're known as the rooftop of Virginia. All four highest peaks in Virginia are all located here in our county. And so if you like country living, beautiful scenery, rivers, wonderful people, this is where you need to stop and visit. For more resources and contact information for the experts we interview, go to the Save Our Towns website. There you'll find a link to register for the September 15th Summit at Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. And please send your thoughts to 
saveourtowns at vt.edu. This is episode one of season three. Be sure to join us next time. Thanks for watching.